Hello everybody and welcome back to the Storm Poker Challenge at MyBet.com. My name is Dylan and in this third video, as promised, we'll be playing two simultaneous Storm cash game tables and putting into practice basically all the theory that we covered in the first two videos. We flop overs as you will guys, two times in three flops, basically 66% of the time with Ace-King you're going to absolutely whiff as we have and we make a bet in position get two cards for the price of one right check behind pick up a king beauty uh, 54 67 everything has missed unless he's on a set so we want to make a value bet here uh, just over half pot and he lets it go it's a little bit dangerous, you know, because if he did flop the fours or fives, set of fours or fives, or set of tens, you know, we're really toast. Or if he had two paired there somehow, um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a risky bet on the end. But that's the idea of a value bet. You know, you got a you got a winnable hand. You got a hand where you think you're good. Wow, another two pair, crazy. Um, but yeah, you you make that bet to increase your total bottom line. Beatable hand, but playable hand. Here, the king blocks somebody's potential flush draw here, making it less likely. There we go. All right, guys. So, approaching basically two stacks over here in the plus, and a stack in a stack and change on the left table. And again, my my apologies for the the areas which which were a bit yeah, less. Exciting, you know, we're only playing the two tables here, but I think it's good, you know, that you guys can kind of slowly build up. First, we play the one table, now two. You guys get an idea of what's going on. Um, we're kind of talking you through it, giving you different ideas, yeah, showing you different plays you can make, both online and live. And hopefully, all this is really going to be useful for your game in general. And then, starting here in our next video, we're just going to be going for broke on four plus tables simultaneously. This guy three bets us as a re-steal from the big, and we fold our baby ace. So this guy's doubled up at least two and a half times. <laughs> or picked up four guy stacks. That's impressive here. At this level. Wow, flop a set, but it is a dangerous board, right? Two suited, highly connected, don't want to be fooling around with bottom set here. I'm gonna bet into it, hope for a check call, and then maybe another seven or eight. <laughs> Alright, let's flat here. Alright, so he, let's see here. I mean, the 56 is made, of course, 10 jack is made. We gotta take another shot here, and it's gotta be a bit heftier because we don't wanna see that spade coming. We flop mid pair on the left table he flats again would have missed his would have missed his flush draw if he's on one and again yeah I could value this if he's flopped the the set or the straight it's 75 to 1 against and I thought he might have paid us with a 9 king or something like that um, 9 ace 9 10 stuff like that another ace king Oh, Big Slick was knocking on our door multiple times this session. 10-8. Uh, Again, we can squeeze this here, um, but we're not going to. Imagine that. We whiff with a king ace. Huh, how often is that going to happen, guys? 66% of the time. Get used to it. Um, <laughs> we make a C-bet and take it down uncontested. But, yeah, you're only going to connect. Oh, shit. There is another player in there. Alrighty, so that is telling me that my concentration has dropped. Um, I'm gonna save that. And okay, that was the second hit, guys. And again, you know, we're, we had a good session. Um, you know, I missed yet again uh, the third player just out of the corner of my eye. And yeah, it's just yeah, little signs. Just being honest with myself. I'm not, you know, I missed that. I, I kind of overlooked it. Um, took a bad beat and another hit here. And so I'm, I'm ready to close this up, pretty much. And let's let's go ahead and look for one more hand and check out right, inside straight draw. You got a good song to end the session on too. 
All right, so he bets it into us, and he is deep stacked. So, rainbow board, if the jack comes, we're off to the races. Damn. Now we can do our out of position float bluff move, right? Represent the queen versus a fellow big stack player, or we can just check it and hope that he checks behind and gives us two cards for the price of one. He doesn't, we flop, or we river the miracle. And we bet into it and hope that he re raises with maybe like a set of fives or nines or something. Ugh. No play. So he didn't bite. But again, guys, those inside straight draws on those rainbow boards versus fellow deep stack players, you don't need the direct odds a lot. If you think you'll be able to stack him off when you actually do hit your 11 to 1 inside straight. <laughs> the. What? This guy was playing the jack too? Get out of here. Oh, so, okay, that jack actually gave him two pair there on the end, um, which was really good for us. I'm surprised he didn't raise that up. But, yeah, that was really weak Fidris or whatever that is. He was playing in position and probably should have bet that turn after our check. Actually, definitely should have bet that turn as a float. Um, yeah. Alrighty, guys. Ace-10. What I'm going to do now is wait until I'm out of the blinds, either one or two hands here at the storm tables, so that I get a couple of hands for free that I paid for with my blinds. Uh, here I'm not going to squeeze the under the gun razor with my ace-10 suit. I'm just going to flat and hold my breath for a decent flop. No dice. Give me a check fold here versus the two mid stackies. And he checks. Wow. They both check. You know I want to bet this. You know I want to bet this, right? But I got no stats on the guys and all my all my bluffs have been going south. Not all, but quite a few. And so maybe they're trying to suck us in. If they check again and there's another rag card here, um, blank, then I'll be betting the river for sure. Wow. Okay. Why not? Half pot bet? How often do they have to fold? One time and three for us to break even, right? Right. Let me take it down. Alright, so there's first hand out of out of the blinds. In the blind again. Let's see what we can do. Okay, hand out of the blind. Hand in the blind. <laughs> All right, there's one, and there's two. Let's see if we can get three hands out of the blinds. That'd be something else. Nope. All right, so that was just a kind of a test to see how often we're actually posting here. Looks like almost every other hand. All righty. All right, for the Miracle versus guy here that we got a little history with, um, they won't see these kind of flops coming. We flop top pair. We flop a weak flush over here. It's again 118 to 1 against that flop, guys. Uh, and here I am going to dunk it out with top pair and just hope that they just let that go. Probably not against this guy, but we'll see. Hmm, it worked. Alright, so we're worried about a better club out there. So we're going to overbet this pot a little bit and hope to take it down right now. And if he shoves, of course we call. So he got a, another check here, and I don't want to give him another free card here in case he is on the diamond draw. So I just double up there on the turn after he checks again. Gangsta lane folds a turn. We take it down. All right, there's cards out of the blinds. Out of the blinds for the second hand. Let's see. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Looks like we can only get, uh, alright, just for shits and giggles here, we'll limp one. Weak Broadway, out the door. Alright, it was one hand out of the blinds. Two hands out of the blinds. Wow, three hands out of the blinds. Okay, cool. So we got our three hands outside the blinds, and this will be our last hand here. Let's go ahead and isolate here. Uh, four times a big blind plus one per limper, and I just threw on a little change. Trey's not good. Hmm. All right. Bet in position versus the check. <laughs> we get check raised. And this chewy nonsense. I've also yellow tagged him. He's one of the better players. 
at least the ones that I've seen. So we're we're checked out here with um, not total profit, but at this point, yeah, 56 bucks. So basically, it's almost two stacks up. And the 33 bummer would be nice to end on a set and catch another stack. All right, hand two outside the blinds. Hand three, and that's it. We're done here at 43.35 again, just over a stack. Alrighty, guys, so this is how it went down. Yeah, this is again in big blinds. We in the session over here, which is, yeah, decent return here in the cash game tables at this level. Uh, it's effectively, yeah, two stacks up. Alright, that's that's a graph here in big blinds, and I'll show you guys here showdown winnings versus blue line versus non showdown winnings. And here, yeah, non showdown, we actually had a loss. And yeah, that's again limping, folding, um, betting a bit wider than folding versus three bets, stuff like that that we can definitely, definitely tighten up on in the future. That's the big blind return, and then the actual winnings here in cash was just at 40 bones. And this is the graph, right? This is the, the graph form of that. You can, of course, come in here and then um, go to all graphed hands, run your expected value differential. Um, all hands here, no filter. And I, I always like to kind of look at the areas where I lost, where I was a market favorite, or at least a favorite to win when we push preflop. So you select your hands here, go to replay selected. Right, we get it in again here, aces versus 10. So again, it's almost always at 80-20 split. Action, raise, three bet, we two bet, three bet, we four bet, guys. We don't flat this, right? We don't flat that with aces, we raise it, okay? Again, the reason is the reverse implied odds. When we just, when we just flat here, this guy can then flat, maybe this guy then overflats, all of a sudden we're in a, a four-way pot with three guys potentially on pairs who are set mining. Difficult spot, right? So we go ahead and we don't fool around with those aces, right? We're, we're happy to take down a, a bigger pot with our aces in position. And, you know, this basically is two bet, three bet. This four bet could also be relatively light, depending on what we know about these guys. Um, of course, as always, we're not playing with stats here at the Storm Tables, but yeah, we're not fooling around with aces and kings, guys. Raise those up in general. Very good. So, tens do flat here. Um, well, effectively flat. They go all in here for the mid stack uh, minimum table buy-in, and fold, 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 and we call the buck. Another thing you got to be careful of when you're multi-tabling. If you think you put this guy all in, right? And there's like a little bit of change left. <laughs> it's happened to me before, where I didn't see, I didn't see the re-raise, the super small re-raise here. And I ended up accidentally folding the hand because of the time crunch. So keep, yeah, heads up, guys. Keep, yeah, keep on your toes. Definitely, uh, don't be, don't be multitasking when you're playing at the storm tables by any means. So good. So we flat. We get in at eighty percent ahead. Beautiful. Now of somewhere on yeah ninety percent because we've also got the nut flush draw to boot. There goes the jack. Look at us. We're we're at eighty two now because he's also picked up the outside straight draw. Um, to his hand, so we dropped a little bit in equity, and one of those cards constituting his 18% equity on the turn does hit on the river, and we lose that pot as the market favorite. That's variance. Uh, now here, pre-flop, we're we're behind the guy, and this is normally a 70-30 split. Um, it's different because the ace is better than our clubby here, uh, and look here, ace king just open limbs, right? We isolate, <laughs> and he only calls. And then, look at the swing. Look at the swing in equity, right? Because he slow played this relatively big hand, right? He just limps, and then only called instead of limp re-raising. I mean, if you're gonna limp that, guys, at least limp re-raise. Um, you know, in this case, when you're, when you're mid-stacked or short-stacked, limp push, right? Versus a bet like that, um, knowing that these guys are going to be isolating much wider on the button in general. And that's exactly what we were doing with this nonsense ace jack, or uh, ace seven offsuit. So we isolate, he flats, and then we, we flop mid pair and the nut flush draw, and all of a sudden we go from 26% equity 
to 92% equity on that flop. Unreal. And again, guys, knowing the power of these pushes, right? I've got I've got to hold this board on the pair, and I've got the nut flush draw. So even if I don't consider my ace good, right? I've got crazy amount of outs here. Um, nine for the flush, right? Two two here for the for the sevens. Um, and then theoretically another three for the ace. Who knows? Um, if he's on uh, jacks, queens, or kings, that would also play. So <laughs> a lot of a lot of equity here with the draw alone. And he bets it, and I shove, of course. And actually, I mean, yeah, that was just again <laughs> something you guys can definitely avoid. Um, not trying to knock anybody's play, but I mean, I, yeah, we also made a couple of funky moves, no doubt about it. But um, you know, that's going to happen, especially when you're multi-tabling. But this kind of stuff, guys, in general, if you do limp it, if you limp your monsters here under the gun, limp raise. Don't just limp call, because that can happen. Very good. There comes a turn, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm at 25%. <laughs> I go from 92% when I push, when I get all my money across the line, I'm a 92% favorite here. King comes and kills that, all of a sudden I drop to 25%, and that was all she wrote. Variance, guys. Adhere to bankroll management. Ladies versus one overcard is always a 70-30 split, more or less. Very good. Aces min raise or ace nine min raises. We three bet as a resteal. He flats, and we flop really well uh, with our over pair here on the rainbow board. A little bit connected, a little bit worried about that. He's only got four left, right? Look at the pot to the effective stack ratio. What do I do? Of course, I shove because I don't want to be fooling around with somebody, you know, with uh, jack ace. Um, jack 10 drawn out on the inside straight draw, stuff like that. If he's flopped a set, he's flopped a set, guys, whatever. Uh, better over pair, whatever. I get it in again at 80% ahead. He flats. There comes the ace. All of a sudden, he's at 95%. Ciao, Bella. All right, guys, so ace king suited versus a king queen. Again, pretty typically a 70 30 split in domination, but we're suited here, so we're 75, 76. All right, one limper. Over limper with a king queen on the button that should definitely isolate. You should raise that up to isolate this guy in general. And we do exactly that. This guy's getting pot odds, as you guys see here, of 1.67 to 1. He needs 38% if he's going all in. He's not. He folds. This guy's getting exactly the same odds, and he does call it. This guy then, from almost dead, right? Only one time in four will he take down this pot. Comes right back from the dead, flops his trip queens here, and he's got 94% all of a sudden to the river. And what do I do? I shove, right, because this guy's effective stack size is the same as a pot. If I'm going to do anything, that's where I'm going to do it. And yeah, we've got overs, backdoor flush draw. Again, somebody having the queen is, I mean, when you have the king queen and you flop that again, it's about 73 to 1 against. Knowing that's highly unlikely, we go ahead and take a shot here, and given his stack size, we shove. He flats, of course, <laughs> and that's all. All right, so that's how that's how that works with the graph. Um, the graph hands. Then you can also come in here and kind of, you know, select certain areas of the graph, and that then shows you a different different layout. Then you can go to graph hands again, check that out, and. Yeah, that's how you can play with this a bit. It's really, really useful stuff, guys, and it's especially fantastic to have when your uh, stats are functioning in real-time play online. It's actually very important. All right, guys, and when you go to reports, then, I've basically set this up for my own analysis of my cash game hands, and I've expanded the, the default um, overall report that Holder Manager has. So basically, in the two hours that we played, more or less. Um, only on two tables, guys, we had over 900 hands, right? And that's because of the storm format there and that beautiful little speed fold button. In the end, we only won 40 bucks. Yeah, 41 almost. And yeah, that's again right at two stacks. Our expected value uh, should have been 29, right? Um, so that means we're running as big blinds per 100 hands played at 22 um, per 100. All right, EV. Big blinds per 100, expected value. That means, again, the times when you shove um, pre-river 
in heads up pots, then yeah, we should have been running at 16 big blinds per 100 in all positions. Average all in expected value percentage was 63. Very good. Uh, pre flop, we're at 65. On the flop, only 42. But when we shoved on the turn, we we're at 93% ahead of our opposition in, on average. Uh, good stuff. Went to showdown 24 1 when we got there, right at 55%. One money at the showdown is this one, and uh, one money without the showdown is a loss. And again, guys, I think we can change that up, um, improve here by yeah, tightening up a bit. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, especially earlier position. Yeah, not not looking for those cheap flops. Uh, save a little bit of that. Yeah, that blind here, blind there kind of stuff. That that definitely adds up in the long run, guys. So yeah, we're losing a bit uh, without the showdown, but uh, winning when we got there, and that at I guess fifty five percent on it. Yeah, more or less. All right. So V pip. What does that mean? Voluntary put money in the pot. So we're playing twenty two and a half percent of all hands. And um, our pre-flop raise was right at 16%. So we're playing a pretty typical lag tag style uh, in six max play. And among good players, you're gonna see this basically this three four or three two split uh, V pip to PFR. So when you do have stats on your players and you see that ratio, heads up, they got a decent idea what's going on. Uh, we were squeezing pretty low. That should be a bit higher. Only squeezing at yeah right under four percent. Uh, three betting a bit higher at right at four. Uh, three bet success rate was at 33. And then I've got a whole string of other hands here. Um, down here you can also just kind of, these are the biggest pots that we played. So we just played one level, so the monetary is more or less the same. You can do the big blind search or, or sword or the money sword, sword, it doesn't matter. But yeah, those are the biggest, biggest pots we played here in those 900 plus hands. And again, back to the remaining stats here. From the three bet, uh, we're four betting here versus the three bet. We didn't raise; we actually didn't four bet here. Um, we did um, five bet quite a bit. <laughs> uh, we flopped our set eleven percent, guys. So that's ex exactly what's expected approaching infinity, just under eleven percent for sets. That means whenever you have a pair and you're looking for that that third rank on the flop, yeah, happen eleven percent of the time. That's more or less exactly mathematically where it needs to be. And yeah, sometimes we got we got action on that. Uh, other times we didn't. Aggression, guys, as you see here, I'm at uh, 6.8 aggression factor. It's too high. It is too high. Got to reduce that. Um, and we definitely threw back a little money on a couple of yeah longer longer ball bluffs there that we could have opted out of for sure. Uh, we'll yeah we'll look to reduce that in future videos. Um, it's a bit against my nature. <laughs> I'll have to admit, but yeah, I think that's that's definitely too high, especially this level. Um, making aggressive moves at 50% anytime we do make a move, that's uh, pretty intense. All right, so we flop C bet at 80%, uh, C bet success at 35, so that's not good at all. Uh, we need to reduce the C bet, maybe opt for uh, delayed C bets a bit more, stuff like that. Uh, decrease this number and try and increase this if we can, but again, when you're playing statistically blind, it's difficult to know. Like, for example, if you have your HUD stats up, You'll know when they're, you know how how often your opponents are folding, yet with pretty great certainty, and that's difficult to uh, manipulate or actually to understand when you don't see those stats in real time play. So yeah, moving right along, river call efficiency at two point five is not bad. Um, overall steel success was at fifty three percent. That is good. Um, steel percentage right at thirty four, and the rest of these stats are pretty much basically blind and steel scenarios. Um, I'm going to start here. Overall steel success was again 53%. Um, steel from the cutoff at 31, 42% uh, success rate. That means basically you open raise uh, from late position and then everybody behind you folds down. Uh, three bet success you see here, stealing from the button a little bit higher as you should. Uh, that's Again, that's at 37%. If people could actually see your numbers, that's that's too high. That's definitely exploitable. but. Yeah, it worked out for us 50% um, of the time. And we were stealing from the small blind uh, really high at 76%. Uh, actually, forgive me, the uh, success rate was at 76%, and we were stealing at 37 All right. Uh, Re-steals, so that means basically three betting from the small um, versus late position raisers. And this is a three bet success rate that could also be from early position open raisers, stuff like that. but. Yeah, we were basically three betting and having the guys fold down to us, to our three bets at 40%. 
And from the big blind, we didn't three bet in that session. And that's, guys, that's how I have this broken down um, for overall my overall report, just to kind of see how I'm running after the fact. And there's a lot of other stuff you can go and um, let's do let's do stakes. For example, nope, that's not right. Let's do position. This is the one I was telling you about uh, earlier. And here you can see, you know, where you're making money, where you're losing money, what's going on, and what do we got? Let's just sort it by winnings. So we made the most money in the cutoff. And when you click on that, then you get all your all your hands underneath. And then again, you can sort it by cash, by big lines, by the expected value difference, etc. Right? And that's how that works. Um, so again, yeah, we made the most money here at 79, almost 80 big blinds per hundred in the cutoff. That's very good. Ironically, or actually unexpectedly, <laughs> we're running second best in the small blind at 50 big blinds per hundred. And yeah, you see the respective VPIP PFR from the different positions, uh, three betting, squeezing, uh, four bet ranges, etc. And yeah, uh, where were our biggest losses? In the big blind, guys, it's, that's going to be everybody's problem child and in early position. So again, the wider open raises we need to reduce, um, probably cut out on open lens, stuff like that. Be a bit more careful in the big blind with our re-steals. Um, that seemed to be the biggest issue, I think, in that session. And other than that, I mean, it was it was a, it was a really good run. Um, all in all, we're running at 22 big blinds per 100. Not a bad return for, yeah, pretty much anybody's standard, given big stack play. So that was all we had for this two-table storm cash game session. And yeah, we had it called getting into the lineup, basically learning the ropes, getting your bearings, playing two tables simultaneously, and in the coming video, then we're gonna run at least one, maybe two tournaments, and then run simultaneous uh, storm cash tables so that you can maximize the total hands that you're playing while you're quote unquote waiting for your wave or waiting for your decent hands in tournament play. After that then we'll be dropping in in at least four cash game tables at the same time and pretty much applying everything that, that we've been showing you guys here in the first yeah, two theoretical videos and, and now here in this active real-time play. Again, guys, it's Dylan from iBet.com. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please feel free to contact us at any time. And until we see you again here for the fourth video in the Riders of the Storm series, wish you all the best, and definitely best of luck at your next Storm Table.